Welcome to the first video on our II Conservation page. This is a talk I gave at the 2015 meeting of the American Society of Primatology in Bend, Oregon. It is titled Giant II Diobotonia Robusta Paleoecology and Biogeographic Range A Proxy for Modern II Conservation. There are around 103 living species of lemur living in Madagascar today. This talk focuses on the genus Deobodontia and the only living species, the I.I. D. madagascariensis, the largest living nocturnal primate. Estimates have suggested that there are only around 1,000 I.I.s alive in the wild today. I am a paleoprimatologist, and so I focus mostly on the fossil record of primates to understand living species, and vice versa. There is a large disparity in the fossil record of lemuriforms. The first evidence of lemur-like fossils are the 55-million-year-old Eocene adapiform fossils from the Messel Pit in southwestern Germany and the Fayum in Egypt. There is a 55 million year gap in the fossil record before we see the 1 to 2,000 year old subfossil lemurs in Madagascar. This includes the first evidence of the giant II, D. robusta, a thousand years ago. And then we have the living 103 lemurs species today. There are a handful of lemur like adapiforms from the Messel Pit in Germany. This includes the controversial Ida. Darwinius massili, that was originally placed along the haplorine branch of the primate tree, but has since shown evidence of being a derived strepturine, lemur-like adapid. The hypothesis for lemur-like adapid dispersal suggests that lemuriform ancestors, which have originated in Europe, spread down through the islands that would later make up modern-day Greece and Turkey in the Tethys Sea, and would have spread into Egypt and the rest of Africa. A second wave of lemuriforms would have recrossed the Tethys into Europe later on. Derived lemuriforms, including Aphromius and Aphroatopus, would have gone on to speciate into more derived lemur ancestors. Eventually, lorises and galagos would have split from lemurs around 55 million years ago in continental Africa. True lemurs would have rafted across the Mozambique Channel from Africa to Madagascar on pieces of debris and chunks of land blown out to sea during major storm events. These events likely would have been infrequent, as winds generally move from east to west and not west to east along the current Mozambique Channel. Once these first lemurs arrived on Madagascar, they speciate into a wide variety of lemur species, ranging in size from the giant sloth lemur, the size of a gorilla, to that of the smallest primate, the Madame Berth's mouse lemur. By looking at modern I.I. and other lemurs' genetics, we can see that I.I.s, in a way, are a living fossil. The I.I. line predates all the lemurs on Madagascar, with all the lemurs, including the giant lemurs, branching from a shared common ancestor with I.I.s around 55 million years ago. This begs the question, are the features seen in modern I.I.s, the skeletonized long finger used for echolocation like tapping, the large ears, the ever-growing front incisors, derived feeding characteristics, or basal lemur traits that were subsequently lost in other lemur species? We have been comparing dental micro patterns for modern I.I.s, extinct fossil I.I.s, and a number of other primate species. The results suggest that modern I.I.s are not the dietary specialists these derived adaptions would suggest, but that they are in fact omnivorous generalists, with a subsistence range including insects, fruits, vegetables, and saps. Is the modern I.I. diet similar to the extinct giant I.I. though? Here we see the wonderful illustration by Velazar Simonovsky showing the giant I.I. in the forests of Madagascar 2,000 years ago. However, human arrival 1,000 years ago coincides with the extinction of numerous lemur species. This radiocarbon analysis of lemur subfossils performed by 
Bernie et al. in 2004 shows that the giant eye-eye was one of the last large lemurs to go extinct, just prior to European arrival. Perry et al. in 2012 used GPS satellite radio callers to determine native eye-eye biogeographic range in Madagascar. This study found that eye eyes have the most extensive distribution of any lemur species. However, each individual eye eye has an enormous home range. These results showed that the eye eye communities have very low population densities and resulted in the eye eye being given endangered status in 2014. Note that the eye eye populations on this map are split between eastern, northern, and western pockets. At a macro level, native eye-eye dispersal appears relatively homogeneous, with isolated western and smaller northern pockets. On a micro scale, however, it is clear that eye-eyes are caught in small pockets of vegetated forest. By comparing fossil eye-eye localities with that of Perry et al.'s 2012 study, we see that eye-eyes have gone extinct in all of southern Madagascar and most of the northern portions of the island. This has trapped eye-eye populations in small, patchy forested areas in the north, west, and east. Here is a close-up of the fossil localities in southern Madagascar that have produced giant eye-eye subfossils. The loss of range from southern portions of the island likely altered eye-eye dietary subsistence immensely. In a follow-up paper in 2013, Perry et al. analyzed the genome of 12 eye-eye individuals from the north, west, and east. They found that the northern eye-eyes are strongly differentiated from all other eye-eyes, suggesting long-term biogeographic isolation resulting in a genetic bottleneck. So the question becomes, was this biogeographic isolation caused by Holocene climactic change, anthropogenic effects, the genetic bottleneck resulting from 50 plus million years on an island with limited gene flow, or a combination of all of these factors? Certainly today, eye-eyes face threats from deforestation, slash-and-burn farming techniques, bushmeat use, and superstition. So what can we do? We are looking at scientific studies such as geological studies, microware analysis, paleogeographic dispersion models, paleodietary reconstruction, breeding models that take into account genetic isolation and patchy forest bottlenecks. We're also working with local peoples, planting trees, trying different subsistence strategies and farming techniques, encouraging species conservation, educating about lemur species, and creating funded positions to bring in needed revenue. However, this approach has to be holistic. I have created the II Conservation page. This is a crowdfunded research community aimed towards aiding in undergraduate and graduate research funding, conservation efforts, and public education. We have set up a GoFundMe page. The beauty of GoFundMe is that all the money is dispersed immediately to us, after a 10% service fee. We don't have to reach a set amount like other crowdfunding sites like Indiegogo. We have also set up a Facebook, DeviantArt, Tumblr, and now this YouTube page. As of today, we have raised $2,271 to support II Conservation, this includes money for research, field supplies, and travel expenses. Our team plans to travel to Madagascar within the next year, preferably this fall, to geologically map the southern subfossil localities to better pin down their age, collect dental microware samples from the extinct giant eye-eye, and take dental impressions of living eye-eyes after observed feedings. While we are taking the dental casts, we will also take DNA samples and tag each individual eye-eye with a GPS collar. The dental casting, DNA sampling, and GPS tagging won't harm the eye-eyes at all. They will be on their way in a matter of minutes. Please ask questions in the comments below, or email me at cpilbro at nmsu.edu. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe so you can see how our efforts progress. Also, please visit our GoFundMe page, 
and help us save the I.I.